All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I start my lesson by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha, Kodash, the bond to the apostles, that was the great millstone, Shalom to the elected nation of Israel, the Sarvatizah, once again from the great millstone, GMS Atlantic Camp. All right, and I um, just wanted to do this quick video. All right, just wanted to respond to this comment that I um, received on a on a past video. Um, the video was basically going into the, you know, what was the three ribs in the mouth of the bear? When you read Daniel's chapter seven, all right, which we all know the bear is dealing with the Medo Persian Empire, and um, it mentions how the bear had three ribs in his mouth, and I did a video explaining what that was. You know, and other brothers have done videos on it as well. And um he is this individual here by the name of Trip five seven seven. He left a comment on there, uh it says four days ago. And I'm gonna read his comment. Alright, and um try to address his question. He asks, Aren't the four great beasts alright, speaking of the beast in Daniel seven it says that arise in the days of those last ten kings that came up from the sea, diverse one from another, verse 3, related to the four great beasts in Revelation 13. All right, so let's deal with that. So when you read Daniel chapter 7, it mentions the four great beasts, which we know the, four, uh, the first beast was the lion with eagle's wings, represents the Assyrians. Um... Going into the Babylonian Empire, then the second beast uh, being the bear, the Medo Persian Empire, the third beast, the leopard, which was uh, Greek, uh, the uh, Greeks, and then the last beast being the dragon, which is the Roman Empire. All right, so now when you go to Revelation 13, which let's go there real quick, it mentions those same four beasts. All right, Slakia. Let's go to Revelations chapter 13 and let's read this. All right, let's start from verse 1. Revelation 13 verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a great, uh, or saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. So this is talking about NATO. All right, this is the so called white man's, or as the scriptures identify him as Esau Edom this is his system all right the beast system that we're currently in today this is what it represents all right and now when you read verse 2 it gives you the characteristics of this beast this current system but it uses all right it uses the the, the same beast in Daniel 7 but it's actually talking about something different all right Revelation 13 verse 2 is not it's not referring to uh, um, you know those kingdoms of old, so to speak, is using it in a metaphoric sense to to identify this current beast. All right, so it's related in the sense that yeah, it uses the same uh, 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 verbiage or the same the same um, animals, but it's talking about something different. So it's verse two it says in the beast. Okay, the beast we just read about in verse one, which is which is Esau Edom system, the NATO and the EU um system, it says which I saw was like unto a leopard. Now what does the leopard represent? The leopard represents the Greeks. Cause also verse two is also giving you basically like a like a timeline of Esau Edom's rulership. Okay, Esau Edom being the so called white man who's currently in power. All right, the way that it describes this beast as giving you a, a timeline of his of his beginning and his end. Because what? The leopard is the Greeks. And that was the first Edomite empire or rulership. That was the beginning of basically the beast coming about. It was those Greeks. But then you read on, it says, in his feet, which the feet represent what? The end. Alright? The end or the last. You know, just like you read Daniel's the second chapter, where it gives you the um the prophecy of the of that of that statue. All right, it had the head of gold and you know the, the breastplate of silver or the arms of silver, you know how it's worded. 
right? And then it mentions it mentions the feet and how the stone came and, and, and hit the statue at the feet. So the feet represent the end. All right, so you got the beginning, which will be the leopard, and then it says what? And his feet were as the feet of a bear. All right, so this bear here is not referring to the Middle Persian Empire. This is talking about the Russians, man. All right, because why? The end of the system is going to come by the way of those Russians, which Russia is not a part of NATO and the EU. Russia is not a part of the B system. And Russia is going to be the basically the head honcho that's going to lead uh, World War Three. It tells you that in Ezekiel 38, all these, all these other nations are going to are going to band behind Russia and come against America. All right. So it says it has a feet. And his feet were as the feet of the bear. So that's the end of this, the system's going to come by the, by the Russians. It says in his mouth as the mouth of a lion. All right. That's talking about Britain. Great Britain. All right. Europe. And the dragon, which is the Roman Empire, gave him his power in his seat and great authority. Right. Which essentially is the image of the beast. The, all right, the system is governed under a, under a Roman vibration. All right, under the, the old Roman system has basically been revived through this current system. America, the NATO, NATO and EU, and all that, man. All right, I just read verse three. It says, "And I saw one of the heads, as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed." It's talking about the Romans. All right, because the Roman Empire fell, but only for a period of time. It was resurrected during the time of the Renaissance when, when the so-called white man um, came back into power. It says, his deadly wound was healed and all the wor uh, world wandered after the beast. All right. So, yeah, this is this is a different. Um, this is different. All right. Even though it uses the, the, uh, the same creatures, if you will, from Daniel 7. You know, it's it's not talking about the same nations um, in particular, all right? So I hope that answers that. Let's read the latter part of his comment. Then he asked, um, and isn't an eagle symbolic of God, whereby the lion with eagle's wings in the verse is symbolic of Christians in its nations, all right, no, all right, the lion with eagle's wings, that's the Assyrians, all right, then it goes into the, how, um, basically them being plucked, and then the Babylonians got up in there, all right, it speaks about a, um, how's the word, it speaks about a man's heart being given to it, and how, how it stood up, it's talking about Nebuchadnezzar, all right, so those beasts in Daniel 7, it, those are specifically talking about kingdoms, man. All right, powers on the earth. This is a scripture that comes to mind. Uh, I think it's in what, Zechariah. Let's just grab that real quick because it goes right with that. I think it's Zechariah 1. Zechariah 1 in um 18. It says, Then lifted up, then lifted I up mine eyes and saw, and behold, four horns. Alright? This is a prophecy in Zechariah. It's a vision that the angel is showing him. The four horns is talking about those same four beasts that you read about in Daniel 7. Horn is a symbolic for power. So four powers. It says, And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be these? And he answered me, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Right. Because why? We were scattered throughout all those different empires. Those four, those four powers. Okay. The the uh the 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 Syrian Babylonian captivity. All right, the Medo Persian captivity, the Greeks and the Romans. See that? It says. Um, verse uh, 20 And the Lord sh showed me four carpenters Alright those are the angels the four, four archangels 
21 says, then, I, then said I, what come these to do? And he spake, saying, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, so that no man did lift up his head, but these are come to fray them, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles. All right, who are the Gentiles? The heathen nations. All right, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. See that? So those four horns that you read here are the same four beasts in Daniel 7. So these are specifically <clears throat> talking about heathen uh, kingdoms, all right, which I just listed them, which, you know, we could find those different videos all over YouTube. All right, so this for this individual that I'm responding to, if he decides to watch this video, you know, he's gotten this far, you know, man, just stick with Great Millstone, bro, you know. Stick with GMS. Watch GMS videos. <laughs> you know, go to go to go to the search bar. Type in G, uh, GMS Apostles Live, and just start. You know, just start from there, man. Okay, so that's what it's talking about. It's talking about the heathen kingdoms. So I think he had a little more in his comment. Then he then he asks, uh, it says, uh, whereby I get plucked up when they are deceived into worshiping. The false Christ when he appears, hence the three ribs in the bear's mouth, symbolic of the three Christian nations. Now, that's totally not the breakdown, you know. That's not the breakdown at all, okay. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about the four, uh, the four major empires, okay, again, which was the Syrian Babylonian Empire or captivity that Israel went through. Then the Middle Persian Empire, which was the bear, the, the, the leopard was the Greeks, and then the dragon was the Romans, which was later, you know, Rome fell, but it was resurrected, as we read in Revelation 13, and it, and it resurrected into this current system that you see today, all right? And that's basically it. Oh, matter of fact, let me close out on one scripture. That's pretty much the point, man. Ecclesiastes 3. Just to show you the parallel of how we know the beasts are talking about nations. This is Revelation, uh, excuse me, <laughs> Revelations. Ecclesiastes 3, <laughs> in uh, verse 18, it says, I said in my heart concerning the estate of the sons of men. Okay, so who are the sons of men? The sons of men is another title for the other heathen nations. All right, because you got three classifications of men. You have the sons of God, who are the Israelites. All right, the the, the chosen of the mo uh, the Most High. You got the sons of men, who are who, who are what the uh, Gentile nations or the heathen nations, and then you got the sons of the wicked, which is Esau. So it says, I said in my heart concerning the the estate of the sons of men, that God might manifest them. And that they might see that they themselves are beast. You see that? So the sons of men are likened unto beasts. Essentially, why? Because they weren't given the law, statutes, commandments. You know, they weren't given those instructions. So they're likened unto beast. <laughs> okay? Unclean. You know? And that's talking about the heathen nations. So that's why the Lord, all right, when he gave Daniel that vision, and John the Revelator the vision, of the of the prophecy, he used beasts because he's talking about the other talking about the um sons of men, which are the heathens. All right, so they got nothing to do with Christians and you know the the, the you know the antichrist and all that. Nah, man, that's specifically talking about hell, basically history. You know that timeline of history of those kingdoms, man. All right, so so hope to answer your question. You know, I'd say, man, just stick with Great Millstone. I don't know if you, you know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you believe or what, but just, man, just watch Great Millstone videos and, and get edified, man. You know, so hopefully that answered your question. Hopefully you others out, people out there was edified. All right, giving all praise, honor, and glory to you. How about Shem Shai, by Shem Racha Kodash? And um, low willing to the next uh, video, I'm going to say Shalom.